Assassin's Creed 1 picks up with Desmond Miles, a bartender and fuckboy, being kidnapped by Abstergo Industries and forced into the Animus, where he is forced to relive the memories of Altair, one specific memory that he cannot access to begin with, so they have to sequence him through several memories to start off with, that put him through the life of Altair and how he went from Master Assassin to Novice, back to Master Assassin, and then took down Al Mualim and got the Peace of Eden, which is presumably what Abstergo wanted, where then he was apparently meant to be killed, but Lucy managed to save him from being killed, and then he went to sleep and saw loads of drawings on his walls, where he thought, what the fuck's going on with my life? I need a new girlfriend. And then he decided that he'd jump out the window. No, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Moving on. Assassin's Creed 2 picks up soon after, with Lucy breaking it. Desmond out of Abstergo's Italy facility, where they then go to a hideout where you meet Sean Hastings and Rebecca Grain, and put into a faster processing animus, and a better looking animus, where you then go and relive the memories of Ezio Auditore da Firenze, where Ezio is trying to get revenge for his family because his family is has been killed unjustly, his brother, his father and his other brother have all been killed hung unjustly by the Templars, so you go and hunt the Templars and kill the Templars until you come to Rodrigo Borgia, who, what, instead of killing Rodrigo Borgia, you decide to spare his life and meet some weird First Civilization character, and that First Civilization character t speaks to Desmond through Ezio and confuses the fuck out of Ezio, to be fair, but that's basically the story of Assassin's Creed 2 in a nutshell. At the end of AC2, the modern day protagonist's hideout is discovered, so they go to Monteregioni and to the old villa where Ezio had lived in Assassin's Creed 2, which has since been destroyed because at the start of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Cesare Borgia and his soldiers attacked Monteregioni and shelled the place to death, killing Ezio's uncle Mario in the process and sending Ezio down a path in which he would vowed to destroy the Borgia, or see all the Borgia pay for their crimes, so he goes to Rome, where he does this and builds a brotherhood to rise up against the Borgia and take back Rome and liberate it as such, and basically make Rome a better place by improving stuff and so on and so forth, resulting inevitably in the death of Cesare Borgia in 1509, and then the continuation of the modern day story where the protagonists go to the Colosseum where they look for some shit and I have... I, I, did, I, did I tell you that I don't really pay attention? Did I? Did, did, did I? Did, did, did I, 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 I don't pay attention. They find a first civilization temple within the Colosseum or whatever the hell it turns out to be and then Desmond touches something which stops time and then makes him turn around and kill Lucy which is just, you know, that that the complete that was out of nowhere, that was unexpected. Assassin's Creed Revelations picks up immediately after where Desmond, Desmond goes into a coma and wakes up in the Animus, unable to communicate with the outside world, and through talking to Subject 16 or Clay Klasmerek, he manages to figure out that he needs to go through a sync nexus to return to the living world, but in order to do that, he needs to relive the memories of Ezio once more, but this time in Constantinople, where he is looking for some precursor temple or whatever it is, just trying to sync up what Ezio is doing. But it comes out to the end where he, Ezio finds Altair's library where Altair is resting because that's what he's looking for, and he finds another piece of Eden. But he says, No, I will not find this piece of Eden, it's not here. I've seen enough for one life, and then, then, then he sees. Altair, and then then he talks to some Desmond. He talks to Desmond just through through the animus. He Ezio talks to Desmond, and that's like what the fuck moment. And then Desmond's like shit, shit, shit. He's talking to me. And then at the end, there's like this first civilization thing saying, "Do you hear me, Cypher?" And then tells him about the world ending and what he needs to do and where to go. So then Desmond wakes up with this knowledge in the real world. And he's like, "I know what to do." 
that, that, that was pretty shitty voice at version of Desmond. I sound nothing like Nolan Lord. I, 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 should, I should drink bleach now. So in Assassin's Creed 3, they go to the Precursor Temple in question and relive the memories of Connor, also known as Radun Hagedun, once down in the temple where they set up a new animus or another animus or the animus just on a glass table. And Connor is a hammered in piece of shit, but that's not what this video is about. So they talk. They, 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 well, they're not, they don't talk. They go to, through the life of Connor, who sees his mother burn alive in front of him, or die in front of him, and that sends Connor down a path where he wants to become an assassin to sort of stop people f this from happening to people, or to sort of get justice as his main reason, and freedom. Those are his two main reasons. He wants to protect his people, but you can sort of assume that two other things are put in there as well. So he goes in there, he goes for freedom and shit, and he goes in all naive and kills people, trying to get at Charles Lee. Uh, for some reason, he's really hard to kill. It's like, one does not simply find Charles Lee. So then they sort of, well, Connor sort of gets to the point where he's like fucking hellbent on it, and he kills his own father, then he kills, then it, then it, then, then he kills Charles Lee. And then he finds some piece of Eden thing that just disintegrates right in front of him. But that piece of Eden, and then he buries something in the, the graveyard. A graveyard. So in the modern day, Desmond and the, the gang go and do the same thing. They go to the, that, that graveyard and pick it up. And then they go down into the temple where Desmond speaks with two first civilization characters, Minerva and Juno, where they tell well, where they tell him that what he has basically what he has to do is kill himself, though they're arguing about it, but the truth to Desmond is that he needs to do this, so Desmond does it, he puts his hand on the orb, and although Juno says it's painless, it looks fucking painful, and he burns alive on his arm into his body, and he's like, rah, 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 then, then, surprise, surprise, Desmond is dead. So that's it for Desmond now, is it? Well, I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. The Monday picks up about a year later, where you're an Abstergo employee being employed to search through the memories of Edward Kenway, not knowing that you're not doing it for a game. As far as you're aware, you're doing it for a game, or some form of game, but Abstergo have more plans. They're looking for something. They're looking for the temple, the sage, and whatnot. I have no idea. The Templars have always been very, very d d confusing for me, but at some point, Edward Kenway comes into contact with the sage, and then that sage is absolute savage mental and retarded, so... Um, Ed Edward has to put him to the sword and then burns his body or be drops his body in the sea so the Templars don't get it. And we see the transformation between from Edward between pirate and assassin and all that stuff. And then in the modern day, it turns out the guy who's been talking you through all these weird stuff that you've been doing, like hacking things, is actually a sage himself. And then he tries to kill you with some really, really ineffective drug. And he's like, I'm going to kill you. And he's got this weird voice. He's got, he's, he sort of sounds like... Um, I don't know, it sounds like um, one of those animated film characters that you get in one of those child comedy films. It doesn't sound like he's got a legitimate voice, but I suppose that 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 is it's, it's a sage, he's a sage, and then they kill him, they shoot him to pieces, and it's sort of pretty funny, to be fair, because I don't know why I said it's pretty funny, but it is pretty funny. So that's basically the story of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, because I'm going through this and summarising in a really bad way that none of you will ever understand. Okay, AC Rogue is the exact same thing. Moving on. Just kidding. So Assassin's Creed Rogue is about Shea Patrick Cormac and the same Abstergo employee in the modern day. So the same Abstergo employee is sent to relive the memories of Shea Patrick Cormac, who is originally an assassin who then experiences a major traumatic event in his life, which makes him believe in the Templar cause, which makes him turn into a Templar. Though I do believe it just he just left the assassins and the Templars were the most applicable cause to his needs so he joined them but he joined the templar and became a very dangerous templar agent looking for a precursor box which he found from charles dorian which is of course arno dorian's father which ties directly into the beginning of assassin's creed unity where arno is feeling guilty for his father's and his um um and his friend's father's death um elise and they sort of go on a revenge spree, trying to find out what everything and trying to do stuff to ensure that something doesn't happen again and so on and so forth. But they get sort of 
having Rumpy Pumpy and it wasn't executed very well, but moving on. So in the modern day, Bishop is here, like, hey, I'm Bishop and I'm retarded. And and you go through these things, find a sage, you kill that sage. That sage called um, German and you kill him, in, but Elise dies at the same time. And then Arno goes and buries him in the catacombs and the Bishop tells you that everything you've done is apparently for nothing because Arno won the fight before it even begun, so it's all pointless. There's no need to go back in time. They just did it because shits and giggles, so there was no point and no like sort of addition to the furthering of the story in the modern day in Assassin's Creed Unity that is basically what that was telling us so unity is actually pretty ineffective on the modern day story so that means that we don't actually need to be talking about this which means that I'm wasting two minutes of your life finally on to Assassin's Creed Syndicate where you relive the memories of Jacob and Evie Fry two twins during the industrial revolution of the United Kingdom meaning that it's the Victorian era so they go to London there's a lot of technology they kill loads of targets who didn't historically exist and to get at Crawford, Crawford Starrick another historical character who doesn't exist and the reason it is to avoid offending anyone but moving on so they kill this person to get the Shroud of Eden which is what the modern day assassins and Templars are looking for and they're sort of competing for it we get to see Sean and Rebecca fighting people or you know in, in more in more action and we get to see Sean do a leap of faith fuck yes and basically they they all try to get the Shroud and they fail and Rebecca gets shot and that's basically the last we see of the assassins and Bishop's like good work assassin we'll recover the shroud in time so I'd assume that, Bish so that Rebecca survived but that's as far as the Assassin's Creed story got but it's there's then there's the World War One rift which takes you back to another sage but in 1915 or something like that I don't know it's during the World War One area so 1914 to 1918 and shit happens there but there's not much that adds to the story there but I thought it was a very interesting thing just to add into the video. To end this video I'm going to put a loading screen here from Assassin's Creed Unity because they're actually quite long and quite interesting you not. So thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed be sure to go ahead and like subscribe share comment and remember this is all from my point of view from the story so all this banter and stuff is how I see things because I'm a bit mental and I'll see you all in the next one. So yeah.